Hey everybody, I'm Sean Powers, and today we're going to talk about loops in a bash script. And loops are a lot like conditionals, except the then part of it is either do everything over again or stop doing the things. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, but bash loops are very useful if you're on the command line or writing scripts. It's just, it's a really, really great skill to have. And there's basically three types. And the first two are pretty much identical. So there's really only two types, I guess, but we're going to get right down to it. And I want to start by showing you a while loop. So let's go to a script that I have written. Okay. I'm on my test machine here and I actually didn't make a GitHub repository for these because the scripts are extremely simple. And so you're, you'll be able to recreate these really quick. So anyway, let's look at one called loop oddly enough that I created and this is called a while loop and let's walk through this and then I'll show you what happens as it actually goes okay so we start out with x equals one we just set the variable x to one and then we say while and then here's the condition just like an if then conditional this is the same exact test that's going on here we have double brackets just like we do with an if statement and the test that we're doing is the variable x is less than or equal to 10 that means it will be true. And so while this is true, I want you to do everything until we hit the done statement. Now here's just a really quick rant. If you remember when we did if thens and case statements, it starts with if and ends with fi, or it starts with case and ends with esec. I have no idea why loops don't start with do and end with od. It just seems like that would make more sense to match the way conditionals are done but it doesn't happen that way. It's the loop starts and it's due and it ends with done. So, you know, it is what it is. And when it gets down to done here, it starts over at the top and it tests again. Now the deal is right here in the double parentheses, I've done an iterator. So X plus plus means it's going to increment the variable X by one. This is just a little arithmetic thing that works in bash. It's really nice. We could change the variable in whatever way, and we could test for any kind of uh, thing that we can test like a conditional up here as well. It doesn't have to be math things or number things. But anyway, what this does is it echoes the number, which starts with one, because we set it up there. Then it will increment it. The loop is over. The loop starts over and it says, okay, X, which is now two because we incremented it, is less than or equal to 10. So it goes and it does the loop. Now, once it keeps adding and adding and adding and X plus plus is equal to 10, it'll go back and start over again. While it says, while X is less than or equal to 10, I want you to do this stuff. And so it'll print 10 and then we'll increment it so that X is now equal to 11. And then it will try to start it over and it says while 11 is less than or equal to 10, which is not true. So it's false. And that way it doesn't do this stuff again. It just goes on to the end. And in our case, that's the end of the script. So it will just end. So what we should see is it should count and echo to the screen the numbers one through 10. So let's see if that's what it does. So loop one through 10. Okay, exactly like we expected it to do. But there's more that we can do as well. Let's edit this file again. Okay, remember when I said that while and until loops are pretty much the exact same thing? They just ask it in a different way? Well, we're going to change this loop to an until loop. So until, and let's go backwards. So let's start with 10. So x will start at 10. And until x is less than or equal to 1, we want it to do all of the things. So let's see what's going to happen here. It's going to start at 10. Okay, it's going to say until 10 is less than or equal to one, and that's false. So it's gonna keep going. Remember it says, until this is true, I want you to keep doing stuff. Does that make sense? It's a little bit backwards. So until the X is less than or equal to one, I want you to do stuff. So it is gonna start doing it. It's gonna echo 10, and then this won't do us any good. X plus plus won't do us any good. So what we wanna do is change this to X minus minus. So it will decrement the variable and then it will go down to done. It'll start over. And now X is going to be equal to nine. So it says until nine is less than or equal to one, which it's not. So it's going to do it again. And what we should see is this will count down from 10 to one because it will keep running until it gets down to it being one. Does that make sense? Once it's less than or equal to one, it will stop. And you probably see a, a problem that we're going to experience. So I'm just going to run this and see if we can uh, explain why it's doing what it's doing. So we'll run loop. And then exactly what I was expecting here, we go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then it stops. 
And it stops because, let's look at it again, we have this set to less than or equal to one. So as soon as it decrements all the way down to one and it starts the loop over, remember what echoes before it decrements, if that makes sense. So it echoed two and then it lowered it to one. So X now equals one. It goes up here to the test and it says until one is less than or equal to one, which it is, one is equal to one. So then it doesn't execute anything else. So that's why we didn't see the one. All right. If we wanted it to do it, we could say instead of less than or equal to, we could say less than one. And that way it has to get all the way down to zero. So if we do that, let's see, we should now get all the way down to one. And sure enough, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And while and until, again, they're, they're formed the exact same way. The trick is to uh, make it make sense in your head, right? Sometimes while is going to make sense. Sometimes until is going to make sense. Whether the, the, condition that you're testing for is more likely to be positive or false or, or true. All right. Does that make sense? Hopefully if you don't like having the option, just always use a while loop or always use an until loop and just form it in your head and uh, just do it that way. Now, before we move on from these, I do want to show you just really quick. Uh, let's edit this one more time. It does not have to be math. Remember I said that before in here, I'm just going to delete these really quick, this whole loop. All right. And I'm going to just paste something in really quick. All right, let's see if this makes sense. Let's talk about it before we actually uh, put it out there. Oop, and I have a typo, so I'm going to fix that typo before we uh, go on. Okay, what this says is until the name variable is equal to Sean, I want you to do the things in here. Okay, so at first the name is set to nothing, so it's going to do it, right? Because it's not equal to Sean, it's equal to nothing at all. And so it's going to say, who are you? And then it will read the variable, but you don't put a dollar sign there. That was the, that was the error that I made. So it will read in the name variable. Okay. And then it will go right back up and test and test again. So when I put in my name, if I put in a name other than Sean, it's going to be false. So it'll keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then once the name is equal to Sean and it tests it, then it will say, then it will stop the loop and it will continue going. Okay. So let's see if that works. I'll save this. Who are you, Bob? Who are you, Frank? Who are you, Susie? Who are you, Sean? Hi, Sean, I've been waiting for you. And so the loop kept running until that test showed that Sean was the, the variable of name. And then I went and, and completed the thing. So you can do it with uh, other things, not just numbers and comparing and things like that, okay? Now, the other type of loop is a for loop. And this is a little more confusing, but one that you use a lot as well because it allows you to iterate through a list of things, All right? I'm gonna show you exactly what one looks like. I have one for loop here. And this is like a for loop in its simplest state. Okay. We say for the variable in, and then a list. It can be a list of anything. It could be a list of files. It could be a list of numbers. It could be uh, a, a bunch of strings right next to each other, like words next to each other. And it would go through each one of those words. The point is it's for X or for the variable name in, and then a list of things. And then it has the same do uh, done feature. But the thing is it will iterate every time until that list is exhausted. And once the list is done, it will move on. So all this is gonna do is say for X in, it will set the value to one, and then it's gonna do the thing here. So it'll echo one, and then it will start the loop over. But the second time it will be the second item in the list. And so it'll be two and then three and then four. So we should just see one, two, three, four echoed onto the screen. So let's see if that's what happens. One, two, three, four. So it's that easy uh, to, to use a for loop, but we can make them a, a little bit uh, easier to do rather than just type out a whole list of them. We can make a list of numbers in a different way. So let's, let's edit the for loop again. Instead of just typing out a whole list, we could do a range. We could say one dot dot 10. And what this is going to do is create a list one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it's going to create that entire list so that's what the curly braces do uh the curly braces with the two dots here between the numbers that says that range right there so now it should be um numbers one through ten let's see if that's what happens 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we can get a little bit crazier too, because that range also will allow us to do uh, something called a, oh, what is it called? Um, a step. <laughs> we can do a step. So what I mean by that is uh, like counting by, right? So here, let me get that out. So the highlighting in is weird. So for X in and the this range that we're defining here, it's still going to be one through 10. But if we do a dot, dot two, that means count by twos. So what we should see here is this range, but only every other number. And it should just echo it out on the screen. So let's save this. For loop. Sure enough, one, three, five, seven, uh, nine. And then when we added two, that was you know beyond 10. So it didn't do that. So one, three, five, seven, uh, nine, that gave us every other number. And then one last thing I do want to show you about for loops. Again, this doesn't have to just be numbers either. Like I said, it just has to be a list of things. So in this folder, I have one other file and it's just names.txt. So if we look at names.txt, uh, we have uh, just a bunch of names on a line here. Garfield, Odie, John, Arlene, Nermal, Pookie. What if we vi for loop for x in and for a list, instead of a range of numbers, I'm going to do cat names.txt like this. So I've defined a variable by the output of the cat command. We've done this in, in previous videos. And what this should give us is a list of names, and then it will just echo those out. Let's see if that's what happens. Garfield, Odie, John, Arlene, Nermal, and Pookie. And it took each one of those and assigned that string or that word to the variable for every iteration until it got to the end of the file and there were no more names and then it stopped. And speaking of stopping, all three types of loops, you can interrupt them. And that's the last thing that we're going to cover is how you can interrupt a loop while, uh, while it's running. And I have two different ways that I want to show this to you. Um, so let's start out with, let's get the loop up here, the, our first one. I'm going to erase all this. I'm going to paste this in again, and we'll go over it. All right. Uh, I'm going to paste it from my screen up here. All right. So let's see if we can parse this out. It says, while true, do. Now, this is a test, right? True will always return as true. It's just the exit code for true is always zero. It's always, always true, which means this is going to be a never-ending loop, right? It will never stop because true is always going to be true. It's always going to evaluate as true. So we have to do something else funky in here if we ever want to get out of it. Now, if, if you're writing this and you get stuck in it, if you do control C on your keyboard, it will stop an infinite loop that's going. So control C is your friend if you get stuck in an infinite loop on the command line. But anyway, uh, it says, so while true do, and it's going to do all the things between do and done. All right. First thing it says is, who are you? And it reads in the name, just like our, our other script did. But then there's a conditional in here. The conditional says if the name variable that we just set is equal to Sean, then break. And break is something that will stop the loop dead in its tracks. It will just, the whole looping mechanism stops. It short circuits it and it goes right to after the done and it will it will execute from the rest of the script from there, right? So it says, Sean ruins everything basically is what it's going to happen here because it, it looks and anything but Sean will just keep looping and keep looping. But as soon as it detects that, it's going to issue the break command and it will completely stop running. Okay, so let's save this. We'll run it. Who are you? Bob. Hi, Bob. Who are you? Frank. Hi, Frank. Who are you? Sean. Sean ruins everything. And then the loop stopped because it did issue that break command. Okay. And like I said, that short circuits the loop, no matter where you are in it. Uh, and this works for all different types of loops, but sometimes you don't want to break the entire looping mechanism. You just want to break that particular iteration, like in a for loop. Okay. So let's edit the for loop and I'm going to get rid of all this stuff because I'm again, going to paste something in from my magical off screen location. Okay. So what's happening here is we've just done a, a for loop going from one to 20, right? This is just a range one to 20. So X is going to equal one, X is going to equal two, and it's going to do everything between here and here. Now the if statement here tests for the number 13. Okay. So if X is equal to 13, then it's going to issue the 
continue command. And what continue does is it immediately short circuits just that iteration of the loop. Okay, so it's going to skip from here all, it's gonna skip all this stuff until done, and then it will go back to the beginning for the next iteration. Okay, so that's the way if you want to like skip something and you can see what's happening here, it tests for the number 13. And if the number 13 is there, it, it short circuits that iteration of the loop. Otherwise it's gonna say the elevator is stopping on floor. So obviously we don't want to stop on floor 13 because apparently 13 is a bad floor. Uh, the sleep command is just so that it goes kind of slowly. This will pause for 0.25 seconds, uh, but let's execute this and see what it does. Elevator stopping at floor. It goes through all of them until it hits floor 13 and you'll notice it did not stop at floor 13. And that's how you can use the continue statement to break an iteration out of the loop. Hopefully that makes sense. It won't break the entire loop. It will just stop that iteration of a for loop. Now loops can get more complicated and usually they do, especially for loops. For loops are extremely useful if you're trying to iterate through a bunch of things. Like one of the really common places you'll see a for loop is if you want to ping a bunch of addresses on your network, you might do a range of numbers and like iterate that last octet. So like ping 192.168.1 dollar sign x or whatever and it'll go through and ping all of the you know the things in that range so that's just an example i encourage you to play around with things like that uh, to see if you can do something useful with all of three of these types of loops and remember control c is your friend if you get stuck in an infinite loop or if you get stuck in a loop that's taking too long uh, control c should break out of there and you'll get your your command prompt back you don't have to like restart your computer or anything um anyway uh, that is it for now like i said i encourage you to try stuff out until next time Remember to learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I'll see you at the next video.